we have been 2.6 million years creating technology, but we created technology just to not work. That was the, the goal of our creation of technology is to avoid work. We avoided like the past. We didn't invent technology just to be having the next cool gadget. We invented technology because we didn't want to work. We wanted to do things faster and with less effort. In the beginning, we invented mechanical technologies like axes or fire. But these technologies didn't spread very fast. It didn't advance. The technology advancement was very slow. And they didn't spread very much. They didn't spread because we were lacking language. So when we invented language, our brains kind of exploded. We were able to build much more complex ideas. And we were able to talk about our ideas to other people. So we were able to communicate. This allowed us to work in groups and perform things that we couldn't have performed before. If you're curious, this is the Facebook of the time. People were as obsessed on showing what they do as we are now with Facebook. After, um, after uh, language, we went ahead and invented uh, writing. Writing allowed us to kind of download our brains to a piece of clay. We could create a new memory for ourselves. We could communicate our, our ideas. And we could uh, tweet about our ideas. So uh, as, as you see, we haven't changed. We still do the same things that we have been doing for millions of years, just trying to express ourselves. But as with any technological advancement, there's going to be an opposition. So Socrates thought that language didn't capture all the richness, or uh, writing didn't capture all the richness of language. So he, he opposed uh, writing. In fact, he didn't write anything. All the, all the things that he said were written by Plato. We needed to make it automatic. So what we did was combine a mechanical invention with a cognitive invention and make the printing press that allowed to express knowledge, uh, spread knowledge and to move much more faster. And this brought a lot of revolutions, big revolutions in, in the world, not only in advancement of technology, but uh, religious wars and many, many others. But the real big revolution arrived with uh, steam power. The steam power completely transformed our society. We went from being an agrarian society to a being a manufacturing society, to being a society based in craftsmanship, to being a society with mass consumption and mass production. A society when we might not have what we want, but we will have a lot of it. These technological advancements were fought by many people. These people that were inventing all these technologies to work less, suddenly they found that they wanted their jobs. Machines could do the jobs of 10, 100, or 1,000 people. But people wanted their jobs. They didn't want to be out of society. So they, they fought back. They went and destroyed all the machines. So what happened? is that we kept inventing, inventing machines. So we had um, like first generation machines, and we continued making machines, machines that could be reprogrammed, machines that we could feed a set of instructions, and with the same machines would do different things, and we call them computers. So now computers are much more intelligent than, than us in some aspects. So in very specialized aspects, computers can move faster and they are faster and stronger than us. So we have like these machines that have surpassed us in our physical abilities and in our cognitive abilities. This is very important because it's transforming uh, our society. Now we have Google cars that will never have an accident. They will allow us to have faster commutes and they with 10% uh, of the cost of uh, our regular commutes. So millions of jobs will disappear because of these machines. People that make their lives as drivers will disappear. And I would even say that human driving will be banned in regular roads because it's too dangerous to have someone that might have not slept well, that might have drink, or that might be speaking on the phone, roaming around uh, our, our streets. There is like uh, a huge number of death uh, related um, by uh, accidents, by car accidents. We have uh, this vertical farm 
it produces 100 times as much food per square meter as a regular farm, uses only 40% of the power, 80% of the waste, and 99% of the water. And the water is very, very important, so 99% less of the water. Today, we can produce double the amount of meat, of chicken meat, with the same chicken feed. So we have duplicated the amount of food that we can produce from 20 years ago. And this is uh, this affecting jobs. So this is happening all, all across. So for example, uh, McDonald's employees in the US asked for a $15 an hour salary. What did they got? They got a machine. They got a machine that removed them from the equation. Now you go to McDonald's, you ask for your food, and you go to the window, and you get your, your food. The food is cooked by a machine. This is the burger robot. It produces burgers for 10% of the cost, and it can produce 360 burgers per hour. We don't know if we can eat as much, but yeah, those can be produced. This is the food tablet. You may maybe have experienced this. You go to a restaurant, you mm, ask for your food, and your, someone brings your, your food. You can pay. You don't have to wait. You will never have a wrong order. So it reduces a labor by 40%. But the very important thing here is to know that where we find these machines now, and we think, oh, wow, so cool, a tablet in the restaurant, there used to be a person there. There used to be a person, and there used to be human interaction. There is no, there is no person there anymore. This is the Hena Robot Hotel, a hotel completely run by, by robot people and robot dinosaurs. <laughs> so. You will get there, you will talk with a robot, you will get your room, and your room is, is cleaned and managed by, by a robot. But you are thinking, oh yes, okay, these are blue collar jobs. These are uh, things that people that uh, manage food, people that clean, people that do, don't, don't trick yourselves. This is the virtual psychologist. It understands what you say, it interprets your voice tone and your facial expression, and it has much more memory than your regular psychologist will ever have. It will memorize every second that it spends with you. It will memorize every facial expression that you make. Everything that you say, the robot will, will do it. And you again will, will say, OK, I really will never start talking with a machine. Well, it happens that uh, there's a lot of people that prefer to talk to a machine than to talk to a real person they can better open to a machine because you don't want to tell your secrets to a person that you don't know. But with a machine, you feel more comfortable and you talk with them. So this is a very interesting uh, case. Um, radiologists are uh, highly trained, highly paid uh, people. In the US, radiologists um, in hospitals were really expensive. So what they started doing was uh, at night, they would send the medical images to India. They outsource the work to India, and mm, Indian people will mm, analyze the images, write a report, and the next morning, these images will be in the hospital. Now, this is done by a computer. This is all software, and the software resides in a not too powerful computer, but it can be done uh, at home. So again, the human gets removed. If we look at Wall Street, 70% of the trades that are done in, in Wall Street are done by algorithms. This is the robot pharmacist. It has served 2 million prescriptions with no errors. A human would have made 20,000 errors. And robots do everything, so they write reports, they write journal articles, they answer uh, phones when you're going to mm, buy a, a, a trip or when you are going to talk with your credit card company, probably you're talking with a robot. Again, you're going to come and say, oh, these technological inventions are so far away. They, uh, they are far away from the market and they are not going to be implemented for a long time. And now what happens is that we are in the middle of a big crisis and there is less jobs because there is a crisis. Wake up. <laughs> this is not a crisis. This is the new order. And machines are going to take more and more jobs. And in the future, there will be new jobs. There will be produced new jobs that will be done by robots too. So 
just as, a, as examples, uh, you remember Kodak, the big uh, photography company of the time, employed 145,000 people. Instagram, which we all know, employs 11 people. Airbnb has 1.5 million listings and has 1,600 employees. This means that one person is running a hotel with 1,000 rooms. Yes, to have in perspective. Uber, 300,000 drivers, no cars, 1,500 employees. When Uber, and Uber is investing heavily in self-driven cars, when they have a self-driven car, these 300,000 people will be out, as there will be out many others that, that drive for a living. So what happens now? Well, what happens is that when machines get better, they beat uh, Kasparov uh, in chess in 1997. They beat the Jeopardy Masters in 2011. And last week, the AlphaGo just beat uh, AlphaGo, uh, Lissidol, in a, the most complex of games, Go. So machines can do some things better than us. They are stronger, they are faster, they don't take breaks, they can work 24 hours, and they will be substituting us. There are very serious studies that uh, have calculated how many jobs will this cost uh, to humans. And they say that in, in 17 years, 15, 17 years, like around 40 to 50 percent of the jobs will be gone. So these, in some places, there will be less jobs. So some places where things are not done by robots, there will be less jobs, so it will be about 30%. Uh, but there will be places where we have 80 and 90% of the jobs gone, people that can be completely substituted by, by robots. So now we are obsolete. <laughs> Great. We are outdated. We don't know how to do anything. But let's stop here and think, what are we obsolete for? We are obsolete to do work. We have been 2.6 million years trying to invent ways of getting out of work. <laughs> and now we, now we made it. Now we made it. Now, now it's great. Now we can say, OK, you, do, you robot, you go do the work. And I'm going to be here like by the pool, uh, just enjoying myself. But it's not that easy. Now technology is as much as a problem as it is a solution. It is a problem in the way that we live in a collective amnesia. We are obsessed with our jobs. We don't know what to do with our jobs. We would, if we are removed from our nine to five, we don't know what to do. So what we are doing is like creating more jobs. <laughs> we need more jobs. We need, every politician will say, oh, we, I'm going to finish with unemployment. <laughs> I'm going to create more jobs. And the jobs will be meaningless. <laughs> and it will be unproductive. And we will create full departments of people that can be substituted by the computing power of a smartphone. So we will be like working more and more on less and less. And this is really uh, taxing our, our society. And we as a society are failing to, to the human species because we are ruining people's lives. And we are paying these in antidepressants. And even if you make it and you keep your mental sanity, your life is going to suck, <laughs> OK? Because you don't have money. You, don't, you cannot do anything. You cannot plan uh, for a long, long time. You are basically thinking, what I'm going to do to get till the end of the month? I'm going to have to probably be living with my parents or living with uh, people that I don't know in a very small place. And I don't have money. I cannot do anything. I'm basically condemned to this teenage society that I cannot, I, society is not, not allowing me to, to, to move. So what we have to do is like go back and start thinking, redefining ourselves and exploring what made us human. What were we before jobs? Let's think about like what, what do we have to do? We need to explore. We need to go out there and find meaningful ways of having strong communities, finding the meaning of, of our lives, exploring our lives in a deeper way through arts, through uh, music, sports, exploration, through relationships, 
But we need to do this, and we need to do this uh, fast. But these poses are, are very important problems. So how, how do we make it? How do we make it? We have no income. So we are kind of, we are kind of stuck. You, basically, we have to find food and shelter again. So what happens is that if robots take more and more jobs, there is less and less jobs for humans. And the problem with robots is that they are taking jobs, but unless robots start like, buying stuff, going to restaurants, and going on vacations, there is no money coming into the market again. So robots will increase, and this money is not coming back. So soon we are not going to have a market. We are not going to have an economy. So we need to find a system that decouples work from wages. And there are many, many ideas, like the basic in income, um, like negative taxes, like that in, in a way, everybody has to find a way to have their subsistence secured. So we'll have to, like, or, or at the end of the month, we get uh, a paycheck, or we will get paid for using products or something. But we need a solution, a solution for this. When uh, Kasparov was playing uh, Deep Blue, and he lost, he was really angry. And he, after the game, he started thinking, how could I have won this game? He started all the game. And what he realized is that by him working with a machine, he could have won the game. Because in every, in every step of the game, he could have consulted a huge database of, of plays. And he could have been better. So he started uh, studying how humans could work on machines. So uh, through many studies, what we have discovered now is that humans with machine produce 25% better results than humans or machines. Um, so we need to acknowledge that we are not as good as machines in some things. We need to embrace machines to work because they are very complex problems that we need to solve, and we are not going to solve them by ourselves. Problems like with global warming, resistance to antibiotics, clean energy, or infectious diseases. These are our time problems. And if we don't solve them, we will disappear as a species. So now it's time to embrace machines and work with them. We are facing now the most incredible of revolutions, a revolution that will exponentially grow our power in the arts, the sciences, innovation, and creativity. So we need now to transition to this final frontier of being human. So thank you.